I really hope that you don't need to watch this video, but if you sadly do have some damage to your wetsuit or you want to know how to prevent it, then stay tuned. Yep, I'm gonna be covering how to repair and care for your wetsuit. Wetsuits, and in particular swimming specific wetsuits, are delicate. Now they're made of neoprene that's nice and flexible, but for that flexibility there's a trade-off when it comes to the durability. And no matter how well you care for your wetsuit, I'm afraid at some point you probably will end up with a little nick or a hole in it. And we're going to come on to care later on, but First, I imagine you've tuned into this video because you want to know how to repair your suit. Now, we're only going to be focusing on small nicks this sort of size because anything much bigger than that, then I would suggest getting the expert to do it. Unless, obviously, you work in the wetsuit manufacturing industry and you're probably more than capable of repairing something larger. Well, on that note, when you're buying a wetsuit, always check it for any small nicks and check the seams as well because other people might not be as careful as you and if it's in a shop, for example, it might have been tried on by someone first and you might find small faults in it. So just be diligent with that. And then once you have bought it, note where and when you get it from because if your wetsuit does break at the zip or on a seam or somewhere similar to that that isn't as a result of neglect by you, it's worth contacting the manufacturer because it's amazing how often it'll either still be under warranty or they'll just simply want to have a happy customer and they will maybe get it fixed for you. And if your suit is older and it rips and it's outside of warranty or it gets a hole that's too big for you to repair, I would suggest looking into getting it repaired professionally because they can do a great job. But obviously only if it's worth it, if it's covered in holes and really old and you might need to rethink. But personally, I've actually had a rip on a wetsuit on the back and I got it repaired and it was as good as new and we'll do another few years. Okay, on to the DIY. It is time to look at repairing the wetsuit. And I would recommend only really trying to do it on something similar to the cuts I've got here. So nothing really more than one to two centimeters in length and you want it to be a fairly clean cut. And just a quick note, if your cuts or tears are really close to a seam, be careful because it can sometimes have a tendency to run into the seam and then become a larger hole. But the two we've got here are in a perfectly easy place to repair. So I'm actually going to do one of these and show you as we go along. So you want to find a nice clean space, probably not ideally grass, but this is where we're filming today. And you want to make sure that your wetsuit is importantly clean and dry. And then you need the vital ingredients, the black glue. Now this is a wetsuit specific glue and with that it means it's waterproof and importantly flexible. So don't think you can save a bit of money and use normal glue because it won't work, but this stuff isn't exactly going to break the bank and it does the job very well. It doesn't need to be swim wetsuit specific, just full stop wetsuit specific. And yeah, it's pretty easy to use. But on top of that, you want something to apply it with, whether it's a cotton bud or a piece of plastic, a spatula, something like that, and some tissue just to wipe off any excess glue. Okay, so you want to open up the hole by folding the wetsuit back so you can see all of the surfaces. Just make sure you don't make it any bigger than it needs to be. But then you're going to apply the glue to all of that inner surface and make sure that you try to just keep it in the hole. You can wipe any of the excess glue from the edge once you stuck it back together, but allow it to get tacky. So the recommendations on this tube are two to five minutes and then you're going to gently push those surfaces back together and ensure a close contact. This is when you can wipe away that excess and making sure that it's sat in a position that it's pushing the surfaces together. You want to leave it until it's fully secure. I'd suggest 24 hours to be really on the safe side, although it's probably fine before that. But yeah, just keep it in a flat position out the way of it being knocked and that's as simple as that. And yeah, that is all you need to do. And I bet now you know that you're gonna be searching your wetsuit, looking for all those little nicks. And it is a good idea to keep on top of them and make sure you keep your wetsuit repaired before anything gets any worse. Now, if you do have a bigger hole, this is sadly beyond my expertise, but a lot of these products like this glue actually came with some extra neoprene patches like these. And you can apply those. You need to cut the hole accordingly to the size and follow the manufacturer's instructions. But it's something that I haven't tried myself. If you guys out there have actually done your own wetsuit repair on a bigger hole than what I've shown you today, let us know how you got on. If you've got any tips, please share them in the comments section below.
Now, just because you know how to repair your wetsuit now doesn't mean you wouldn't prefer to prevent it in the first place. And remember, these suits are delicate, especially if you've come from previously using a sailing or a surfing wetsuit, you'll be surprised at how delicate. They need to be treated with care. And Quite often, new wetsuits will actually come with a pair of white gloves. Now, these might look a little bit funny, but they're there for a purpose, to prevent those small nicks and tears that you might get from your nails, a little bit like the ones I've got in my wetsuit. And I've got super short nails, and I'm super careful, and they still happen. So even though you might feel a little bit funny putting on these weird-looking gloves to put your wetsuit on, it is worth it, trust me, because your expensive neoprene will thank you. And when it comes to actually getting into your wetsuit, you want to be careful how you pull it up. So obviously over your ankles first, gather it, and then try and always pull with the pads of your fingers and pull it up gradually one section at a time, keeping those nails as far away as possible. And when it comes to removing your wetsuit, you don't actually need to be so careful because the inside is much more durable. So you can rip it off pretty quickly, stamp on it, and it should be fine. And then there's the aftercare after your swim. Make sure that every time you always rinse it thoroughly so you get rid of any chemicals or anything that might have been in the water. And then it's how you dry it that's important. So try and drip dry it and ideally fold it in half to hang it over something so it's not being pulled by the shoulders. And then once it is dry, you want to try and keep it as flat as possible. Basically, the more shallow the folds in your wetsuit, the better, because if it's folded really tightly, it can start to crease and that can make it a little bit weaker. So something like a wide hanger or a towel over the hanger and then drape your wetsuit over that if you've got the space. Wetsuits are expensive bits of kit and essential for triathlon, but if you take good care of them, they should last you for years. So hopefully this video has extended your wetsuit's life expectancy. Well, I'm hoping you guys have enjoyed it. If so, you know what to do. Give us a like, click on the globe and subscribe.